A full day on my own. No wife, no jobs. I am doing nothing. I'm just gonna watch YouTube. Might watch a bit of YouTube today. Might even go a walk. Bit of watch a your Yorkshire Pop Tops. Bit of wondering where. If you know, you know. Oh, oh no. No. Hell no. No. I thought I had a day to myself, a day chilling. And the lads are here with a van. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I got so many plans. I did not know these were coming. I don't know what's happening. I thought I'd got a full day to myself, relaxing, just smashing some YouTube, catching up with all the other ones. Let's go and find out what these are after. Hell no, hell no. I wanted a date to myself, maxing and relaxing, chilling out, nobody around. <laughs> Lads, no, no. I've had a date to myself, I'm not coming out to play. No, she's out all day, I've got no wife, I'm just gonna chill and watch YouTube all day long. Come on, we've missed you, you've had a long enough break. Come on, it's time for season two. <laughs> So guys, it's time for season two. The lads are right, we've had a big enough break. We've had a Christmas break. I've been poorly with the flu before Christmas as well, which has wrote, absolutely wrote me off. Um, hope to you guys, whoever, any of you guys that's had that flu, I hope you're all right because that put me in bed for three days and I'm still not 100% on my chest now. So we're gonna get season two underway. Before we do any camping or anything, Jameson needs some, uh, some jobs doing. Uh, the head unit's gone, the door speakers are knackered, my diesel pump knocks like so loud, like bang, 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 bang. So we're going to get underneath, see if we can quieten the pump down, put a new head unit in, mate, hopefully today. Uh, some speakers and the door pockets, hopefully, and some sand deadening. And if we get time, fix the electric socket that I went on a Scarborough vlog. So, a bit of a maintenance one, kickstart the 2023 Urban Monkey season. We are back, let's go! So, first stop, Alfred's head unit and speakers. <laughs> we just sat here all way to Alfred's and we're thinking, uh, we do new merch is on. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to find a doubled in stereo, because the one that's in there in a minute, where it came with Jameson when we bought it, it's like an Android one and it's totally rubbish, so slow, it doesn't work, so I'm looking for a Kenwood or a Pioneer doubled in, I think. <laughs> Sticker bomb. <laughs> Bloke technician's toolbox in Alfred's. That technician's just took his toolbox out. He's not clocked the sticker, but he's just clocked all his hoodies and merch. He's like, you lads on a stag doing outfits. <laughs> so we have found a stereo. There's one on offer at the end, a nice Pioneer one. It should be 400 pound. They've got it on offer. Uh, somebody returned it. It's all working order for 200 quid. So I've bought some replacement speakers, a DAB um, antenna for the windscreen. So it should be all good to go as long as we can get the connection kit for it. This, this looks expensive. Not bad there, that boys. Uh, He's just shouted to us as we leave here. Enjoy your stag do, boys. So, let's get back, get the toys fitted, hopefully, and then get through the jobs so we can get back out camping. Let's go! So we're back from Alfred's, we've got all his kit, got back to Jameson, Sean's got his tools. Unfortunately, Pierce has had to shoot off, he's got work. Saturday afternoon work, it's terrible, isn't it? So we're gonna try and get this installed, 
It's not going to be an R2, I don't think. It's just going to be more or less us getting it in. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got the socket to do. Um, and maybe, hopefully, if we get time, have a look at this diesel eater. Well, that might be a job for tomorrow. But, right, let's get cracking. So, this is the one we're replacing. It's an Android one, and it's just totally packed in. And even when it was working, it was really slow, just didn't really work. So we're going to take the T5 cuppies out, which are really easy. I'll show you how to do them now. These are awesome if you want some cup holder space in your van. Literally, as easy as that. T5 cuppy. Instagram, check them out. So once we've pulled the T5 toppy off, there's two tech screws in the top. And then that face plate that normally sits over here just locks into these and that's just pulled out of the way just unclip the uh, airbag uh, sorry traction control that one's passenger airbag I've left that connected and just put that over there so there's another, there's another four tech screws just here and that'll whip the stereo out so then it looks like we're going to need a different faceplate because it already had an aftermarket stereo in I was kind of hoping that we could utilize that one but it's the actual stereo that's filled this blank plate here so I need a blank plate to fill this that ends up in that shape. So hopefully I'll be able to get the stereo in and add that in later. So that's the four screws out. So hopefully the stereo should, there we are, lift out. Ah, nothing is ever simple, is it guys? So with, like I was saying before, because we thought this had already got an aftermarket stereo in, which is the Android one. But unfortunately, this Android one uh, accepts the main Volkswagen uh, input from the car stereo loom. But obviously, this aftermarket one I've bought is different, so I need a connection, adapter, and a full kit. I've located one. Alphas haven't got one. I've located one in Nottingham. We're going to swing over there with Sean. Go and grab that. It's another £95. <laughs> I just want a quick fix stereo. Oh, so this is what I'm talking about. Look, that's the standard wiring loom, um, the shared look. So you've got Volkswagen and Audi, and that's your main boss that goes straight into the back of the stereo. This is our new one, and as you can clearly see, that is not going to fit in there. So we need an adapter that goes in there to there and a different fascia plate and everything else seems very expensive for 95 pound i can get it cheaper i found it for like 70 something on amazon but i want it done today we're not going to try we're not going to mess about so i'm going to shoot off to this shop pay the 95 try and grab that try and get it all in and fit it today nightmare so stand by <laughs> see you in nottingham in a minute wow this has ended up ended up you know when you want to do a quick a quick job, like some quick maintenance, chuck a stereo in, chuck some speakers in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nothing is ever simple at all, is it? So, wiring loom was different, so we shot over to Nottingham to pick up um, a wiring harness from our, uh, other side of Nottingham, from Car Audio Centre. We got there, when we rung him up, he said, I've got one in. So we drove all the way, 45 minutes, to the other side of Knotts, gets to the Car Audio Centre, and he hasn't not, uh, got any in stock, but he's got him in his warehouse. So, I don't, <laughs> so we've paid. I've paid ninety-five pound for this better quality harness, and now we're following him in his car to Baseford, which is like 15, 20 minutes away, to get it so we can get back, so me and Sean can fit it. So it has ended up being a real palaver and a bit weird. So we're following a guy from a car audio shop across Nottingham to go and pick up a wiring on it. So it's ended up being quite a, a strange and expensive day. See you in a minute. Two hours later. So we just pulled up in this uh, industrial estate in Baseford. Actually, it looks quite nice. It's industrial estate, it's not too rough. There's plenty of cameras around, so if we get done over. <laughs> Happy days, right. Oh, sat nav always starts with you. So, shut up. So, this is the industrial estate. It's been right here, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, package picked up. 
Seems really expensive what it is, but it saves you a lot of messing about. Woo! We're back. Back in Jameson. Oh, and it's freezing. This is our new adaption kit. New face plate to fill the centre in. So let's see how we go. Should be straightforward. We are just mounting the new face plate into the fascia. So then we can bolt the stereo into the side of these, which will then I'll slide into the new dash, well the old dash, lock into place. The new wiring kit will lock into that the old boss. So that's that matches the original boss there. Look, we'll work with that, and then this converts obviously your main boss into that stereo there. Let's go. Easy peasy, he says. So this is our new fascia plate with the side mounting rails. Um, what the guy told us for a bit of a tip, it's just a uh, bit of a top tip to make sure it's easier to get it aligned, is on your new side rails, is basically tie them, tie wrap them on first, so then we can fit the stereo in, so the new stereo will fit through there now, which will hold these in place a lot easier now they've tie wrapped on. So once we get it all aligned, bolt through, so then that is fixed. Then what we can do, once that's bolted in there, pop these off one at a time, slide it in, drop a screw in, just so, because I'm imagine holding all these and trying to line it all and bolt it in, just be so fiddly. So, nice tip. Cheers, pal. That's the stereo slid into the new housing. And as you can see, using the tie wraps to hold that plate on and the two sides, now we can line all the side bolts up, the mounting bolts, quite easily with one hand and drill them in uh, and screw them in. It already got an aftermarket stereo on, so the aftermarket ones come with a USB boss, so you can plug your phone in and other stuff for your media and music and other stuff. And that had already been run round the back of the dash here and through a little hole they drilled at the back of the uh, glove box. So what we're doing, because it's already got one in, is plugged it in, USB to USB, taped it up so obviously it not come out, and then we're using that as a drawer wire on the old one to pull the new one through, which is a Brucey bonus. But you can actually get Jan right round there if, if you've got smaller hands than me, and you can actually get to it back out, so it won't be too much trouble anyway. So what Sean's trying to do now is trying to take all the screws out of the glove box to hopefully if we can slide that out so we can feed, so we can get his hands in the dash. So the DAB aerial, we can plug in the back, run that through, up the side pillar and stick it in up on the pillar there. We've cracked it. Just take your time, there's quite a lot of screws. The screws at the bottom here, you, for these ones you have to pop these little plastic clips off. So, and then there's one in a, in a little box there yeah, and yeah. one right at the back. So, then after that, it pops out. It looks, uh, for some of you who's not obviously technical minded or you've not done anything like this, it is really straightforward. It looks a lot worse than it is. It's just a couple of screws and pops, uh, pop pins. Um, it is quite straightforward. I would recommend, like we have said many times, get paying for that um, power harness. It just makes it loads easier. So Sean has got the dash out. So now we can uh, pass the cable from the DAB aerial from the back of the new head unit all the way around through up the side of that collar pillar and then plugged in there. So we've got it all in, bit faffy. Luan's just back from a first aid course, so we've just been having a talk to her. A little bit tricky just getting all the wires tucked in. It's quite straightforward. We've run the uh, DAB aerials through back of the glove box, fitted them up there, ground some paint off so the copper connection gets straight onto the uh, body. Stuck that on there, run them through, it's in. So we're going to roughly place this in. Um, everything seems to be working fine, but it's very crackly, which we know because we know the speakers have also blown. So uh, we've rigged the light up outside. We're going to see if our, what time it is now. See about if we, how quick it might be just to whip one door card off and test it all out. So we're going to screw this into place. So we know that's done, just a face of plate to go back on. And then we'll whip a door card off and try a speaker. So guys, we're back. 
back working on Jameson. Uh, we just lost all light yesterday. We tried to rig up the big camping light to our big ledger battery. Um, it, did, it did help, but it just worked quite the right lighting. And it was getting really cold, so we decided to call it a day. So it's Sunday morning and we're going to crack on. We've got the uh, speaker to finish. Speaker to finish on that side. Uh, Finalised fitting. We haven't fully fitted the stereo because we've got a DAB signal issue, the digital aerial. Um, this door card's got to come off. This window um, doesn't work all the time. It's got a mind of its own. Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. Um, it's an absolute nightmare. So while we've got that off, sorting the speaker, I think we'll have a look, see if we can get that up and running. Can't be much. I'm hoping it's either a connection issue or somewhere sticking. Hey, Pierce is here. He's got a few hours helping us out before he's back at work. It's an awesome day today. Check that out. Sun is shining over the fields. We're going to try and get Jameson sorted. Right. Bruh. I wonder if Pierce, I wonder if now though, they're now tightened up. <laughs> Take two. So guys, this is the speaker unit I was telling you about, the standard one. So if you as you can see, it's all sealed in and pot riveted. So you can't you have to drill these, we drilled the other ones and took the whole unit out, and then we cut around this to make this a bracket to fix our other speaker into. But what we're gonna try and do this time is leave this in place because we're going to use it as a bracket anyway and use a multi tool to just cut around that nice deep job <laughs> better way of doing it with the multi-tool why it's fixed in place so we literally just cut straight around that speaker as you've seen so then now we can use that as a bracket to screw our new speaker into straight into there we're going to probably put a little tiny hole in this rubber grommet because the speaker wires come through the top uh, fixed into the top of the original one but our new speakers because the aftermarket connection on the back so when we connect onto these the speaker from the back of the new speaker will come round through that grommet, connect into there with uh, a clamp connection. Loads better way. There is a full kit you can buy. Um, it's got plate speakers and it comes with also a rubber cone. Now the rubber cone sits around the speaker and I think that's just to seal up to the door card. Uh, as you can see, there's a bit of corrosion. So they must get a bit of moisture and damp in there and that'll stop it getting into the speaker and also as it seals up to the door cord it'll punch more sound out into the cab which sounds a little bit better i don't want to go to that expense um just want to improve the sound a little bit so if i put some sand ending plates in there and on this panel um it should be just as good so guys this is original speaker you see me trim that with the motor tool that's made a nice bracket now for our, our new speaker to screw into. We'll show you the other side shortly, but I've got some sand deadening mat. So I want to cut a nice piece out of here, here, and also put a bit at the back of the speaker just to give it a bit of a, a bit more of a duller, nice, richer sound. Stop that tinniness vibrating. See, these doors are now for it. Loads of people have got loads of sound deadening around. Good piece there, a piece there, and a piece at the back should be perfect. If we've got any left, I might just put a little piece at the back of each door card just to give it a bit more of a richer sound there. So let's get to it. Now remember, it doesn't have to be fully covered just main parts of your body that you want to sand dead in um, just remember like you, you know underneath the kitchen sink sand deading pad is only this big it's just to take some of the tinniness out of it so that will be plenty for that door piece in the back of here will make a big difference I don't know if you see that there but 
uh, put some sanding in on the back as well as I'm going to fix this speaker into here put some of the remaining sand in it in panel uh, pa uh, put the, some of the remaining sand in it in pieces on the back of the door cards I get this speaker pot riveted in and put all this back together it's getting cold now guys getting a bit sniffly so as you can see that's the original bracket that we left in and cut round left a notch for our new speaker wire to move freely um, so we don't get pinched and then that's our new speaker nicely screwed into the old panel um, sand endings all on that sticks really well sticks even better and it's easier to put on top tip um, if you warm it up so if you warm it up in the house just for room temperature or ideally like I did got underfloor heating in the kitchen and just laid the mats down on the underfloor heating for a couple of hours and it was really nice and mouldable Moldable? Moldable? Malleable. <laughs> um, so then you can obviously rub it into all your contours of the doors and everything else. Uh, so yeah, let's get it all put back together. I'll test this speaker um, and then sand it in on the back of the car, put it all back. So that's all the stereo and dash put back together all the door cards are back on that's it from this episode nice bit of maintenance done we fixed the socket on the back all I've got to do now is fix my diesel heater pump because it's knocking so loud so that's the next job a good valet get the paintwork done and season two is back let's go so I hope you enjoyed this episode don't forget click the link Hit subscribe, leave a comment in the comments below, and we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, boy!